All right, if you have a code list in your infinity, you can click on it and you can rename it if you need to, to rename it. If you want to use somebody else's code list and just build on it, you can rename it and adjust all this information. From there, if you wish to edit the code list, you hit the pencil mark. Now, if I created a new code list, I could hit new and I would rename it whatever I wanted. And I don't need to do that right now because I am just going to edit an existing and it pulls up the code table. <clears throat> and if I click on the code group, I will see all of the codes that I have created. If you are creating a code list from scratch, it will create the code, and then you will need to create a code group. Now I call it default. I put all my codes in one. Some DOTs will create code groups. They'll have a particular codes for topo, codes for stakeout, codes for right away. So you might have multiple groups. I have all of my codes in one group. So I've only created one group call it default, and then once I'm on that group, I can click on it, I can now create new codes. So I'm gonna go ahead right now, you can see I have codes here, but I will create a new code from scratch just to show you what it does. So create new code, it pulls up. The code is going to be, um, I already have an EOP, EP, uh, so I'm just gonna create something random. What's the code, Jeremy? Okay, EG, edge of gravel. When I go over here to the code description, and I type edge of gravel. In the field, we'll only type EG, but it'll be give it the description edge of gravel. And if your data collector set up correctly, it'll actually say edge of gravel, which would be really nice. Now, it is a point. Everything we do is a point. You do not, under any circumstances, change this description. This is where I'm wrong on YouTube. I actually changed that. But you maybe want it to start line work. So I will hit start line. That's what will indicate, yes, this is going to be a line work point. If it was a control point, so like CP, control point, there is none on the line work. That's a single point. You know, manholes, things like that. Those are all single points. So EG would be edge of gravel. Yes, I'll start it as a line. And you can assign a color to the line and a thickness to the line. If you wish, you could also import layers from CAD. So if you open up a raw CAD file, just has your template, your layers are there. You can save just a raw DXF without anything into it and then go here to layers, import, and it'll browse out to that DXF or DWG and it will bring in the layers and blocks right out of CAD. And there'll be options that you can now select those layers and assign them to those codes. It's kind of redundant in hopes you have your CAD set up to automatically do this. You don't really need to do this in Infinity. Some people can, but we give you the option. And you can also assign blocks so you get certain symbols in Infinity. So like a fire hydrant looks like a fire hydrant or a manhole looks like a manhole. All those can be attached to this code. Those only get applied in Infinity. The only part of this that goes to captivate are the thicknesses and the colors and whether it starts or doesn't start a line. The layers do not go over to Captivate. It's better if you bring in layers or to use or else you have all the layers. So if you bring in a CAD, like a raw CAD file that has 300 layers, you're going to get all 300 layers. So you only want to bring in something that is, you're actually going to use on these codes. Yes, or else you'll just have tons to pick from. Now, one thing I want to cover as well, so we've covered line work. Now, I'm going to go down here to manhole because sometimes you want to do attributes instead of saying this is a sewer manhole or a, you know, sanitary manhole. Maybe you want to just create one code for manhole right here, MH. So you open it up. I can click on MH here, and you can do attributes once it's selected here. So I can do an attribute. I can make it mandatory, and I can give it a choice list. And now I have a choice. I can force it to do sewer, water, storm. So when I store the code manhole, as soon as I store the point, it brings up a screen. What type of manhole is it? And you can go pick it. And inverts, same thing. I made it a nor invert, and I can put in a negative, hey, this is five feet invert. These are all going to be tied to that one individual manhole code. So I don't have to create a code for sewer, manhole, water, manhole, storm, manhole. You can, it's up to you, whatever your customer wants to do or whatever you want to do, but this is one way to do it. And attributes can be assigned to anything you want. So for tree, 
I have canopy cover and I have it set for a range so I can shoot the trunk and I can put in the canopy cover and in my CAD, I have it go look at that attribute and it scales my block according to the size of that canopy cover. So if I got a 10 foot canopy cover tree, I actually get a block that's 10 foot in diameter. So these are things you need to know how to set up ahead of time in your CAD and know how to set them up as well in your code list. Okay, so once your code list is created and you want to get it out into a CS20 or a CS35, whatever, you can go export. And if you do an infinity code table, this creates the infinity file that you can then take from computer to computer. If you want to go to your data collector, you need to do it as a SmartWorks DBX and you browse out to where you want to put it. And what that creates is three different files, which I have saved right here under my Kukarank and code list. So you see I have the infinity code file. There's the LICT, which can be passed around from computer to computer. Or I have the SmartWorks code list. There's the, that's the DBX. It's three different codes. You need all three. These go into the code folder of your USB or SD and then settings, tools, transfer user objects, transfer a code list. And now this code list is on your data collector.